Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I have another rant for you today. As you can see, I'm in my hurricane gear. My Ibis got back from the game. <clears throat> the Miami Hurricanes were 53-31 winners over the Duke Blue Devils at Hard Rock Stadium today. And I got plenty to talk about with this game, man, because they sure as hell know how to exhaust a person watching a football game. But before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. As we creep higher and higher in our subs, I know it's not WNBA season anymore, but we'd love to get you guys to watch everything else besides WNBA content. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell. And if you haven't done so already, jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe there also. Let's jump in on this game. Cam Ward throws for 400 yards, five touchdowns. As Miami was down 28-17, five minutes into the second half, and he proceeds to lead Miami to a 53-31 win. The Canes outscored Duke 36-3 from the time the game was 28-17. But man, oh man, Miami sure knows how to make this shit interesting. Kings jump out 14-0 real fast. This game was way different from last week's Florida State game. Duke is a better team than Florida State. Duke has a much better defense than Florida State. Yet Miami was able to score 14 points in the first five minutes of the game. They're up 14-0 real fast. They go right down the field. They force a three-and-out punt. Miami then punts back. Then they get a pick on the first play, and they have a short drive for 45 yards. It's 14-0, and you're thinking – this thing is going to be a massive whooping, except this is Miami, and the defense of the Miami Hurricanes continues to be a problem. The defense is a problem. This is just what Chris Stock and I discussed yesterday when talking about this team. You can't mess around like this, man. You cannot. And Duke has a lengthy drive. Which I'm sorry, lengthy in yards, but not lengthy in plays because it was a four-play drive with plays of 21 yards, 27 yards, 27 yards. And eight yards to score a touchdown, and now it's 14-7. Miami punts on three plays. Duke gets the ball back. Boom, another, another big play drive again. They had a play for 40 yards on a completion. A, a play for 27 yards for a touchdown. It's 14-14 now. And you're like, God dang. Miami's able to come back and score their longest drive of the game. And if you haven't noticed by now, Miami's lengthy drives in terms of plays don't typically end up in touchdowns. They end up in field goals. And that's what happened again. 12-play drive, 67 yards. They get down to the Duke, 11. They actually have down to the 6. And then they go nowhere but backward. They, take, they kick a field goal. It's now 17-14. But then Duke gets the ball right back. Boom, 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 boom. And it's now 21-17 Duke. And Manny Diaz is feeling great in his return to Miami. Second half, those are Miami punts. Duke, you know, takes the ends the half on downs. You go to halftime. Duke starts the second half with the ball. 10 plays, 75 yards, touchdown. This drive really bothered me a lot because this was an example of the mistakes that Miami makes on defense. First of all, I'm going to start naming people. I'm going to stop, stop using their numbers because I'm sick of using numbers. They need to have their names called out when it comes down to the mistakes that they make. And, yeah, they may make good plays later on in the game. But I'm going to tell you right now, let's see who. Uh, where is he? Daryl Porter Jr., my guy, you need to be better. You are a senior. Be better. Jade Dice, Rich Richard, Richard, my goodness, can you be on the, the wrong side of more blown coverages? and being smoked left and right. The entire first half was Jadice Richard getting smoked. He gets burnt constantly. It's exhausting to watch. Those two in particular, and of course, I'll look at Jaden Harris, who is always seemingly on the wrong side of plays. I didn't really notice him being that bad today. I noticed him the last few weeks being really bad, but not today. But Richard and Porter specifically, in the defensive secondary, were horrible. Secondly, Ruben Bain, Tyler Barron, where the hell are you guys? 
Simeon Barrow, can we get some pressure with the front four? What is going on? Zero pressure. Zero on Malik Murphy. Malik Murphy had his best game of the season today. Today, he had his best game of the season. This is the guy. This is the guy who, coming in, was completing 56.6% of his passes. His QBR has gone up since playing today. He had not had a game in which he had more than 295 yards, and that was last week against SMU. Today he had 325. He was 25 for 41, 61% completion, three touchdowns. He did throw three picks, but this was his best game of the season. And Miami put absolutely no pressure on him. They allowed him to stand around in the pocket and absolutely pick them apart until finally they woke up. But this drive here, my, there's, it's third and 11 from the Miami 11, 16. And Miami goes into like a, almost a drop coverage, soft zone. They go into a soft zone. They let Malik Murphy complete an easy pass to Samir Haggins for 10 yards. So now it's fourth and one from the six. So, of course, Duke is going to go for it. Duke calls timeout. Actually, no, I don't know why it says that Duke called timeout. Because Miami called timeout there. Duke did not call timeout. Unless they charged it to Duke. From what we saw in the, st- in, in the box, D- Miami called timeout. For some reason, well, whoever, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Miami that called timeout because we burned a timeout right there. Yes, that was a Miami timeout. I think this is ESPN I'm learning is wrong a lot on what they put in their system. Miami called timeout there. And what you have is Duke comes out in a formation and then puts everybody in motion. They're shifting guys everywhere. And what do you have the hurricane defend, the defensive players doing? They're like chickens with their heads cut off not knowing where to go. And what happens? Easy touchdown pass to Jordan Moore. It's 28-17. At that point, Miami looked dead in the water. Because, again, just like last week against Florida State, they're not looking down the middle of the field. They're not looking at their tight ends ever. They are, they're just not doing the things necessary to win the damn game. They are a pass-first team. We have to stop this shit about run. They can run the ball, but they are a pass-first team. Cam Ward is who will get this team to where it wants to go. It will not be Mark Fletcher. It will not be Damian Martinez. As much as I like those guys and they're powerful running backs, they are not big, big play threats. They're not explosion guys. They're not. They, they can get you those tough yards. They might break a play here and there for 10, 15, 20, or even 40 yards, but they're never going to break it 75 yards. They're tough running backs, and I like them both. But for this team to go somewhere, it's going to be on the shoulders and the arm of Cam Ward. He cannot make those stupid cross-field passes as he did again today for a pick in the second half, as he did versus Cal for a pick six. But let me tell you, it it is ungodly frustrating watching you call timeout, burning a timeout. Why are you burning a timeout? In the first five minutes of the sec- of the third quarter, if they score, they score. The fact that you call timeout and they ran all those motions and you didn't know where to be, y'all just don't look prepared defensively. It's very frustrating. So it's 28-17. Thankfully, though, Miami responds immediately right down the field. Cam Moore completes a three-yard touchdown pass to Xavier Restrepo. It's 28-25. They go for two. I'm going to tell you this. I hate the idea of going for two with seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. It's chasing points. If you get it, great. But it's not the greatest idea, in my opinion, and I will always stick to that. I don't like it. I'd rather never see it. But they did it. They got it. Great. It's 28-25. Miami's defense finally makes a play. But in large part, this was just an awful throw by Malik Murphy. He threw one deep. For o, um, threw one deep and OJ Frederick Jr. picked the ball off. He played. He he played his position properly as a safety. He didn't bite in. 
The ball was literally thrown right to him. It was an easy play for him. Thank God he made the play. So now Miami has the ball down at the Duke 38 to start the possession. Seven plays later, it's 32-28 Miami after Elijah Lofton run for two yards, and it's uh, Miami leading. Now, of course, we're going to go back. Can Miami make some fucking plays defensively? They just made one. Yes. But I thought that was more of a play created by Malik Murphy because we didn't really put pressure on him. He just made a bad throw. 10 yards, 13 yards, 7 yards, 25 yards. These are the plays. Eventually, they get to the point where it's fourth and goal from the seven. Miami finally stiffens up. First and goal from the seven. Malik Murphy incomplete. Malik Murphy incomplete. Timeout Miami, which I didn't understand that timeout either, as we are now in the fourth quarter and we're burning a defensive timeout. I, I, I don't get it. Malik Murphy incomplete. Oh, I think that's also incorrect. I think that's supposed to be a Duke time. I think Duke called timeout there. ESPN do better, please. I'm trying to rely on your statistics because I was at the game, but I didn't write all this crap down. Third down play, Malik Murphy incomplete. That's the first play in which I saw Richard actually knock a ball down. Thank God. They kick a field goal. It's now 32-31. And that was the end of it for Duke. Miami comes right back down the field after getting a good return to the to midfield. A short run by Martinez and a 49-yard pass to Jacoby George. Finally, we saw a, 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 a we we finally saw on that particular play a, a wrinkle to Miami's offense. And I will say this: Miami does not go in motion at all. They don't make the defense. They don't make the de- they don't make the defense move. They just line up and go. They, there's no motion almost ever. Where I'm watching Duke in motion, literally every single time. And I'm not saying you gotta be in motion all the time. But you have to create some type of confusion on the defense. That's how you dictate a game. And Miami did, did, did dictate the second half of that game after the first five minutes, second half. They didn't let, they didn't do that. We're going to take what you give us nonsense. No, you have to attack these teams. You cannot let them tell you what to do. You tell them what's going to happen. So in this particular play, if I'm not mistaken, this was a play in which they had three wide receivers on the top side. It's that formation in which they typically want to run a wide receiver screen. But in this particular case, Jacoby George goes deep. He gets by his DB. Perfect throw by Cam Moore. Touchdown Miami is 39-31. It was a great wrinkle to what we typically see. It's a great wrinkle. Miami forces a punt three and out. Oh, boy, there we go, a three and out. Welcome back, boys. But then Miami throws a pick on Cam Moore, deciding to throw the ball cross field when that was a third down play. There was a holding. They should have just thrown the ball out of bounds. You can't mess around like that. Throw the ball out of bounds. Get rid of it. Punt the ball. They'll be at their own 10-yard line. Instead, they got the ball at midfield. But thankfully, Miami's defense again, they held up. They held up. They got better as the game went on, thankfully, because that first 35 minutes was an abomination, folks. It was bad. Duke has a bad punt. Miami gets the ball. Mark Fletcher goes for two yards. Xavier Restrepo takes a screen, uh, takes a, a slant, goes to the house, 66 yards. Folks, I keep telling you, the slant is always open. The slant is always open. You don't have to throw it deep. You can throw the slant and let your receivers go. Miami has weapons. Xavier Restrepo, record-setting day, becomes – the, the number one yardage guy in the history of University of Miami football. Congratulations, my guy. Well earned. Great job. Today, eight catches, 146 yards, three touchdowns. Salute to you, my friend. Now also tied with most receptions in University of Miami football history. He'll break that next week, obviously, um, at Georgia Tech. Don't sleep on Georgia Tech next week. Please, God. You can't do it. Got to come out ready to play. But Restrepo goes 66 yards, touchdown, it's 46-31, and now you're feeling okay. Now you can finally take a breath. Next possession, Miami's defense comes up with another pick, this time by um, Jadais Richard, the guy who I've talked about. Yes, he came up with the play. Thank you, guy. Thank you. Because for as many as you gave up in the first half, you better get us some in the second half. And he did. So I will credit you now. 
I can talk about one way, I can talk about the other. But the, the amount of times that I've watched him get burnt this season makes me cringe. Miami takes the ball, three plays, 30 yards, touchdown after a Mark Fletcher run for three. Sam Brown catches one for 26, gets to the one. Fletcher scores. It's 53-31. And that's pretty much the game right there. Miami had a chance. They forced enough. Then they forced a fumble. So what you're seeing here in the second half is punt, punt, turnover, turnover, punt. Miami's defense finally woke up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The big play is driving me crazy when it comes to this, this unit. It's nuts. Miami did try to get, put the ball in the end zone again, but this was a little risky where, I mean, they got Cam Ward out there with two and a half minutes to go in a 22-point game. Probably should be on the bench. Completed a nice pass to Riley Williams to hit 400 yards. But on the next play, they have a clear blitz, and no one picks it up, and Ward gets killed. And he fumbles, and then Duke eventually punts, and that's the game. Game clock management remains an issue. Timeout usage remains an issue. There are things that still are out there and that you see, that I see. But I won't sit here and shit on this performance in the second half. It was a big-time second-half comeback. But, man, can we can we do this without the stress? Can we do this without, without the stress? Duke is a good team. People can sleep on, say whatever they want about Duke. Duke is a good team. Duke is better than Florida State. Duke is better than Florida State. Duke's defense is better than Florida State. Miami allowed FSU to dictate last week. Thankfully, the second half, Miami finally decided they were going to dictate. They finished with 526 yards of offense, 27 first downs, 31-52 in time of possession. They win the turnover battle 4-2. to two. They rush for 126 yards, 4.1 yards per carry, only five penalties for 52 yards. They did have a bad face mask penalty that allowed Duke's drive um, in the second half to continue. That, that ended up in their one field goal after it was 28-17. But all in all, the second half performance was exceptionally good. They outscored uh, Duke 36-10 in the second half after the first half where, I'll tell you what, Miami could have put this game away in the first quarter. They could have. They had a chance to put this game away in the first quarter. But they let Duke stick around. I mean, you, you just can't do that. And you're going to be at Georgia Tech next week. You can't do that then. But look, end of the day, Cam Ward has another monster performance, 400 yards, five touchdown passes. They're going to live and die on Cam Ward, bro. Cam Ward is that dude. He is that guy. And, it, and, and they have to – you have to put the ball in his hands. I like running the ball, but I have – you have got to put – Cam Ward is the one that's going to take you there. If you don't think that, I don't know what to say because Cam Ward is a playmaker. Flat out. And he had a few balls dropped today. He had a few balls dropped today. But that's part of football. It's part of football. A salute to the defense in the second half. They did a good job. But that first half, you got to clean that shit up, man. You can't come out like that. I mean, offensively, it's 14 you need to be You need to be putting people out when your offense gets you a 14 nothing lead in five, five minutes into the game. You got to. And I want to see a conti- I, I, I want to see more from the offense in terms of motion, making defenses make the like make the defense play you. Make the defense make decisions. You know, get them in some type of you know chaotic shit going on in their on, the, on their side of the ball. I mean, that's unnecessary because that's what people do to Miami all the time. They do it to Miami because it's been seen on film that if you go in motion, Miami DBs will lose you. They will make mistakes. They will overplay. They will they will blow their assignments. 31 points, a lot of points to give up to a Duke offense that doesn't score. Duke doesn't score. If you look at Duke, 26 points versus Elon, 26 versus Northwestern, 26 versus UConn, 21 versus North Carolina, 23 versus Florida State, 27 against SMU. The only game they scored over 30 points coming into today was against Middle Tennessee State where they scored 45. Today they had 31, and it was all offensively generated. It wasn't generated off of turnovers. It's all based on their offense. Tighten up, man. Tighten up. Miami, though, next week, traveling to the Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech right now is 5-4. and four. Is Tech off today? 
I think Tech is all. I think Georgia, Georgia Tech has a bye week this week, so they are going to be prepared, and they always give Miami a tough time. So Kings better be ready to go. Be ready to go because after this, you got two more. And if you saw today, Syracuse was down 24-3, I think it was, to Virginia Tech, and came back to win 38-31. Best believe that season finale for Syracuse is going to be a monster game. And if the the pollsters give have the decency to give some level of respect to the teams in the ACC, Syracuse should be ranked. Presuming they win, presuming they beat Boston College, Cal, and UConn, they're going to come into that game at 9-2. And, and they should win all three of those games. They will come in at 9-2. and two. And that will be a massive game. And Miami will have to win that game. Because I don't know what I don't know what's going to happen in terms of the rankings, in terms of the conference. Because SMU's four and zero, Pitt's three and zero, Clemson's five and zero. Can't have more than one loss in this thing. But I don't know how it's going to be if you have a loss. I don't know what the tiebreakers are going to be. I, I'm not even going to start even try to think about it. Just win out. But good job, Miami Hurricanes. Second half was great. Keep doing keep doing it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know I'm going to get some hur critical Hurricane fans of me saying that I'm too hard on them or whatever. No, I'm not. This team has weapons everywhere in offense. This team should have scored 70 points today, <laughs> realistically. Definitely 60. Definitely 60. And if the Miami defense plays the way it played in those last five possessions, you have a, you have a scary squad. It's those other seven or eight possessions in which they don't do that. Um, by the way, today, Miami's office had 14 possessions. Comparatively, last week, they had eight. That's an example of allowing FSU to dictate the game. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Pound that like button. Hit that bell. And go jump on over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there as well. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Facts over feelings. Come on now.